Hi, this is Drew at Finale Fireworks. In this video tutorial, I'm going to explain the angle convention in Finale 3D, which is pan, tilt, and spin, and I'll give some examples using some common effects. Let's jump right in. To visualize the angles in Finale 3D, it can be useful to look at a model of a moving light. So here I have a Google SketchUp model of a moving light. In this example, let's pretend that our firing position is the base of the light, and we have the two other parts of the light, one which can swivel on the base, and then the light itself, which can swivel on this axis here. Now, first let's talk about the tilt angle. The tilt angle in Finale 3D is the angle from the vertical axis. So the vertical axis from the firing position is the axis or this blue line that points straight up from the ground and straight up from the firing position. The light at the moment is pointing toward us, which means that it has been tilted, and that is the same as the tilt angle in Finale 3D. So that's the difference between the angle straight up and the direction the light, the light is pointing. So for example, if straight up is zero degrees, then we could say that this light has been tilted approximately 90 degrees at this moment. Now, in addition to the tilt angle, this light can rotate around on the base, and this is called pan. So at the moment the light is pointing toward us, but it could just as easily point to the left, or to the back, or to the right, or any other direction, and that is the pan angle, and that is independent from tilt. So tilt is pointing up versus pointing to an angle off of the vertical axis, and pan is an angle around that vertical axis, the direction that it points. Finally, there's spin. So for the moment, imagine that there was a stencil on this light, or a gobo, of the Batman symbol. Now, when it's just a beam of light without any stencil or gobo, it's the direction or the orientation of the light beam makes no difference. But if you applied a Batman symbol to this light fixture, the orientation would matter if you wanted the Batman symbol to be oriented correctly when it shined up into the sky. And that is spin. So spin is... Uh, rotating that stencil on the light itself. And that again is independent of the other angles, pan and tilt. So if you have an item that is symmetrical, the spin doesn't matter. But if you have an item that's affected by its orientation, then spin becomes a factor. And we'll go ahead and give some examples to illustrate that now. The first thing I'm going to do in Finale 3D is unhide the additional angle columns that are hidden. So at the moment we have tilt, we also have the interpreted angles column, but we don't have pan and spin. So I'll go to the blue gear menu, hide or unhide columns, I'll hold shift on my keyboard, click pan and click spin to add the pan and spin columns. So now we have tilt, pan and spin. The next thing to mention, as I mentioned when we were talking about the moving light, is to note that the orientation of the angles and the way the angles are represented in 3D space is a function of the orientation of the firing positions. So here you can see I have a single position with the arrow pointing toward me, or in this case, the audience. And I also have a set of firing positions arranged in a circle where all of the arrows are pointing toward the center of the circle. So the angles are impacted by the orientation of the firing positions. So if we come back to the view here, I'll go ahead and add a single comet to our front position. By default, you can see that the item is added and it's straight up. You can also see with the pan column unhidden that the default pan angle that has been inserted is 90 degrees. The reason for that is because the most common way to angle an item when designing a display is left or right with respect to the audience. And that would be by grabbing the donut at the top of the trajectory dot, and then just tipping the item to the left or to the right. So here I'm affecting the tilt angle. So for example, I can adjust this item to a negative 30 degrees. Now you can see the tilt is negative 30 degrees and the pan angle remains 90. What if this item did not have a pan angle of 90? What would happen? So I can just delete this by right clicking. And now you can see from the front, the item appears to be straight up. But if we rotate around, 
you'll see that the item is pointed toward the back. So when there is no pan angle, the tilt still applies. The item is pointed parallel to the arrow on the firing position. So if this was a positive 30 degrees, which I can type directly into the tilt column, you can see that that item is now pointing toward the audience along with the arrow. So the pan angle of 90, which I'll re-enter here, allows the item to be tilted to the left or right with respect to the audience. And when you insert most items or many items, the pan angle is automatically set at negative, or excuse me, at 90 degrees to allow you to tilt the item to the left or right. Now, I also want to point out that when you tilt an item and you're viewing the item from the front orientation here with the arrow pointed toward you, you're tilting the item to the left or right. However, if you switch to the side view or rotate around your camera viewpoint to be at the side, and then you uh, try to angle the item, you're still affecting tilt, but the pan is automatically adjusted to point the item toward away from the audience. So here you can see I've added a negative 40 degree tilt and the pan has been adjusted to negative 180 to allow me to point that toward the audience. So if you're looking from the front, you're affecting the tilt left and right. And if you're looking at the side, you're affecting the tilt forward and back. What you're really doing is automatically getting a different pan angle so that the item is tilted as panned in a different orientation. Now, a couple times, I adjusted the pan angle by typing directly into the um, field here in the script window. But there's another way to adjust the pan, which is by grabbing the donut at the top of the trajectory dots here. But you can't be looking at the item from the front or from the side or from any angle looking kind of straight at the item. What you can do is go up above the item using either the top view or getting yourself positioned above the item. When you do that and you grab the trajectory dot, now you're affecting the pan angle. So here you can see we're rotating the item around the vertical axis. The tilt remains the same at negative 40 degrees, but the pan angle is adjusted as we swing the item around, sort of just like swiveling that moving headlight on its base. Now, that's pretty complicated, but all you really need to remember, if we go back to, if we can go to the script menu, angles, and straighten is that if you're working with a basic effect and all you want to do is tilt it left to right or angle it to the left or right all you need to do is insert the effect and then tip it tilt or in this case tilt it to the left or tilt it to the right as needed and it's just that simple but in certain situations pan can very be very useful let's look at an effect that symmetry matters so as I said uh, in my example using the Batman light stencil, some items have an orientation that matters. Now, looking at this comet, regardless of how this comet is loaded into the rack, it will look exactly the same because it's simply just a single point of light. But if we remove this item from our show and instead add a cake, we'll get a different result. So now we have an item that is a rainbow slice cake and you can see that uh, it's important to note here that the colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, etc., from left to right as designed. So the orientation of this cake absolutely matters for it to look correct with respect to the audience. Now, everything looks good here, and I do notice immediately one difference, which is that this cake has been inserted with a pan angle of zero, or blank in this case, which represents no pan angle. Now that allows this item to be fanned to the left or right with respect to the audience. So that's happening automatically. So just like a comet was added with a default pan angle of 90, a cake is added with a default pan angle of zero to give the fan uh, the look of being left and right with respect to the audience, which is exactly what you'd want in most cases. However, there may be a scenario where you want to angle this cake to the left or to the right. And if you're going to do that, then you need to understand how to affect the spin angle to get the orientation that you want. So in this example, I'll go ahead and start angling this item to the right. And you can immediately notice 
that two things have happened. One is I am adjusting the tilt angle here, but in addition to that, the cake has turned and we can no longer see it very well. So if I come over here, you'll see what's happening is the cake has now been panned uh, around and therefore it's not getting the orientation we want. All I wanted to do was to uh, tilt this cake to the right with respect to the audience. So how can I fix that? I have my pan angle, which I need, and I have my tilt angle, which I need, but what I can do is change the spin. So I can put in a spin of negative 90, which compensates for that pan angle. So let's go ahead and exaggerate the angle a little bit more. So I'll go ahead and drag this over to say 45 degrees. So what's happening here, if as we look at this cake, is um, to accommodate the tilt angle of 90 and getting the trajectory dot to point to the right, we need that pan of 90. And then all we're doing is spinning that cake around uh, as if it were that stencil on the end of the moving headlight to get the exact orientation or spin that we want. So in the situation where you'd like to angle a cake, you need to be able to, you need to know to unhide the spin column and adjust that. So let's do that one more time quickly. I'll go ahead and delete that and re-add the cake. So here you can scrub through and we can see the cake. And I'll go ahead and just angle it to the right at 40 degrees. And now you can see our pan angle is causing our pan and tilt angle combination is causing the cake to be fired in the correct direction, but it's spun around incorrectly. So I can just enter the opposite of the pan angle, which is negative 90, to allow the cake to be oriented correctly. So that looks really good. So that's an example using uh, a little bit uh, more complex item, like a cake, which needs some adjustment in certain situations. All right. Let's do one more example using comets, and this time we'll add a comet to each of the firing positions in the circle. So I'll select the position group I've created for all the firing positions in the circle and add a comet. By default, all the comets are firing straight up with respect to the firing positions, and they all have default pan angles of 90 as expected. Let's say that I'd like to create a helix style effect so the comets appear to uh, fly in sort of a circle or a helix as they go up from the ground. So I can do that by selecting all of the position, oh, excuse me, all of the effects, and then grabbing the trajectory dots, and I'll be able to affect the tilt of all of them at the same time. So I'll go ahead and adjust this tilt to say 20 degrees. So it looks like that. So now you can see that all of the comets have been tilted. Now, the reason that they're all tilted around in the circle is because, remember, uh, we're tilting with respect to the arrows, and in this case, with the pan angle of 90 perpendicular to the arrows. So because this, the arrows on the firing positions are all pointing to the center of the, center of the circle, everything is tilted as we would expect automatically. Now, I can exaggerate this a little bit more by adding a more aggressive uh, go ahead and add a little bit more of an aggressive tilt angle. So I'll go ahead and grab that trajectory dots, trajectory there, and give it a little bit more of an angle. Now you notice what's happening is because all the effects are firing perfectly perpendicular or tangent to the circle, the circle is getting, the circle of comets is getting wider at the top. So we can compensate for that by adjusting the pan angles. So we can shoot those not only at an angle, but pointed in a little bit toward the center of the circle. So remember the earlier example with the single comet where we swiveled it around to affect the pan angle, the same thing applies here where I can work on it from any angle except from above. But if you work on or change the angles of items while looking from above, then you can affect the pan angle. So here, while looking from the top down, if I grab one of the trajectories for one of the comets, I am now changing the pan angle and you'll see that angle represented there to the right of my mouse. And I can bring that in here to something, say, 45 degrees. And now you can see the change that that's made. I'm getting more of that hourglass helix shape. You can see the tilt angle stayed the same at 30 degrees in the script window, and the pan angle has now been adjusted to 45. So let's give that a playback and see how it looks. 
All right, that looks really nice. So come back over here to the bird's eye view. And in closing, I'd just like to mention the angles column, which is also displayed by default in the script window. This column uh, represents uh, a text representation of the tilt angle. There is an asterisk here, which tells us that it does not take into account the spin or pan angles. This column is extremely useful for reports, especially in shows that just use angles that are to the left and to the right, standard tilt angles without any unusual panning. But it is important to know if you're doing complex things with angles that you also want to unhide the pan angle, and in some cases, thus, excuse me, unhide the pan column to see the pan angles, and in some cases, the spin column so you can see the spin angles as well. To give an example of why that can matter, if I select one of the comments here, I'll just select one on the, the front here, and I'll just change the pan angle to say um, 10 degrees. So now I have, I have actually caused an issue that would impact my show, and you can see that displayed, you can see that here with the item uh, being oriented in the wrong direction, but if you look just purely at the tilt column, or you look purely at the angles column, it's not reflected. And that's why when you're doing advanced angles, it's important to unhide the other relevant columns. So I'll go ahead and adjust that one back. That's the end of this video on pan, tilt, and spin. I hope that you learned something, and I hope you have a better understanding of the angle convention in Finale 3D. Thanks very much for watching. Please check out all the other great videos on the Finale 3D YouTube channel. And if you'd like to be notified about videos as they come out, don't forget to subscribe.